14 WILI and 95.3 FM presents Hometown Threads, a closer look at our community and the people that make it go. Every week, you'll hear uplifting stories from our local businesses and our neighbors. Now, here's our host for Hometown Threads, Keith C. Rice. All right, welcome in episode number 20 already. We hit the big 2-0, Hometown Threads here on 14 WILI and 95.3 FM and Will Manic Today Facebook. Uh, of course, you can catch Hometown Threads every Tuesday on the radio, 5.05 to 5.30, and then Wednesdays up on Willamette Today, and they usually pin it right atop the page, so that runs for about a week, and uh, we appreciate the team over at Willamette Today uh, on their Facebook page for uh, running Hometown Threads. Of course, Jay Matt Rupar running the controls here uh, at Studio Central at WILI, and of course, Hometown Threads couldn't be made possible without our friends from Liberty Bank, Be Community Kind. A big shout out to our three local managers, Mary and Gargoni down the street, West Main Street, the uh, Gateway Commons branch over by uh, Job Lot, Ocean State Job Lot, right? And then, of course, Angela Smart across the street here at the radio station, 679 Main Street. Uh, That Liberty Bank and Liberty Bank down at Route 195 in Mansfield. Hello to Carrie Small and her team. A big shout out to Liberty Bank B, Community Kind. Matt J. Rupar, would you uh, take that? Coffee mug prop for the people in the radio just have no idea what I just did. I handed a, <laughs> we have two sharp Liberty Bank mugs uh, representing our props for the folks watching on Willamette Today Facebook. Keith C. Rice here, and uh, here we go, episode 20. We got Schiller's, Schiller's in the house. We got the uh, famous Rick Schiller and his uh, partner in crime, Eric Bolio. Well, Eric and I go way back. Thank you for joining us, fellas. Just get a little closer to the microphone sure. if you wouldn't Thank mind. You. It's uh, great to have you here, and uh, Welcome, Rick. Welcome, Eric. Welcome. Glad to be here. Nice to be here. Now, Rick is uh, no stranger to these uh, studio microphones, as I said in previous <laughs> episodes. You know, a lot of these guests that I've had have been on Wayne's show, and you've you know come to record commercials, as Rick has done throughout the years. Eric, though, you've been down here, but just never uh, been on a show, right? Nope. First time. All right. And I've tried to get Schiller's on. Uh, th- these guys are hardworking uh, business people. There's Schiller's in business since 1951, right up there on, uh, what's the, it's on Main Street, right across. 1088. 1088 Main Street across Memorial Park. Right. And, uh, well, you've been in that building how long now, Rick Schiller? We moved into that building June 1st of 77. My dad opened up the store way back when, when it was on my in my uncle's shop, when he had uh, Schiller's Mart over on North Windham Road. So he opened up there as a set-in back in, 19, in May of 1951. And then moved over here to Church Street. And then moved over to uh, to 857 Main. Wow. And then in June of 77, moved over to where we are now. So here we go, another family business, which, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a, I'm in a, been in a family business. And it's, it seems yeah. like we've had a lot of family businesses here on Hometown Threads. Yeah. Of course, we had Pleasant Pizza on a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, the uh, Provistalist uh, family. Uh, so let's go back even further. Uh, of course, uh, Eric and I go way back to grade school, St. Mary St. Saint Joseph's. Yeah. Uh, Rick Schiller, we'll start with you, uh, the owner of Schiller's. Tell us about, uh, you grew up in this community. Tell us uh, about was, the early days of Rick Schiller. I was born in, in the ho- Wyndham Memorial Hospital, obviously, uh, back in 1953. So, the as the stories go and whatever else, uh, I used to be allowed to walk from Natrog School over to where my dad had the store over on Church Street. That's when kids were actually allowed and told to go walk from school to wherever. You assumed that you'd actually get there. Uh, you know, I basically went into the store and was told, "Don't touch anything." You know, and just kept me in the office and whatever else. And so, well, you know, my my mom worked over for the library service center. So when my dad would go pick her up, I, I went off with him. Um, I think that went on on and off during my formative years, but I was in the store. I mean, it was still real. Uh, back in early in high school, so when I was about 16, uh, I always chuckled that I had to go back in the store after school to go pay for my phone bill that I was running up with a lovely young lady that lived in Vernon, Connecticut, and I'd run up phone bills. My parents would go, we're not paying for that. She did not get any cheaper. This August is our 49th anniversary. Wow. So, yeah, she didn't get any cheaper. Uh, and when I, I went off, went to college, went to Worcester Polytech for my undergraduate. Oh, my cousin Jeff went to WPI. Yeah. Good school. So, WPI, University of Connecticut, RPI, whatever, done all sorts of engineering type stuff. Um, after I 
got married in 74, in 75, whatever, I became the Saturday crew. So my dad and I would, I would come into the store every Saturday. Uh, I have effectively worked every Saturday since 1975, which is why in my staff whines that, you know, oh, we got to work on Saturdays. Yeah. I, my heart bleeds yeah, for him. There's no pity. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no pity from Rick. Like, <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I worked six days yeah. a week for God knows how long. It, it wasn't only until uh, a couple years ago when we decided to be closed on Mondays that I actually got a weekday off. Um, and did that for quite a number of years. I was ended up, because I had multiple engineering degrees, whatever else, was working for Hamilton Standard, designing jet engines and whatever else, but also working on Saturdays. And in uh, 93, my dad was starting to get, he was slowing down and was like, okay. And at that time, sort of reading the handwriting on the wall of United Technologies, offloading places to Florida and whatever else, and it's, what did I want to do? And ended up becoming the first uh, male in all of United Technologies, to the best of my knowledge, that took the Family Leave Act to go run a family business. So in October of 93, I left UTC to come basically take over the store officially under a leave of absence, sort of knowing that I was not going back. And then in February of the next year, they said, oh, who wants a golden handshake? And I raised my hand and said, me. And then the classic thing, that was that's sort of the rest of the story. But the sewing machines, the inside of the sewing machine look like a control system that we were developing for all sorts of different things and the software for doing, you know, software design on digitizing looked like software we did. Yeah. You know, Rick, when you were at school, did you have any uh, idea that someday, okay, I'm going to be taking over the family business? Or did you have like a backup plan or other plans possibly? Not that I was going to take over the business. I kept working in the business and really did enjoy that. It's funny because each one sort of work towards the other because being in retail, which really meant that you had to be able to talk to people, to be able to do whatever, helped an awful lot in a large environment like United Technologies to get in there and be able to present whatever you wanted to present. And then obviously the science and the engineering that I was doing in the end came back because Although sewing machines can be relatively simple mechanical machines, they can also be probably the most sophisticated piece of technology that you can bring into a house. You look at the high-end sewing machines, they're pretty outrageous critters, so what they do. So they all sort of fit together, and it, it presented me somewhat uniquely, even within the sewing world, as to somebody that was running a business but really knew all the technology. Wow. Show, uh, Schiller's show, sewing and that, right? We still, we've done vacs as long as we've done sewing machines, pretty much. Uh, and, you know, it's a little bit, it's obviously a different area. Uh, vacuum cleaners, you don't require the classes anywhere near as much and things of that sort. But it's like, okay, but they're associated with, people always say, why are sewing machines and vacuums into the best I can say, if you want to call it urban legend, they were the women's appliances. So if you go back in the 40s and 50s, that was the things yeah, that were. you could come into the, that, uh, you know, we were, relatively speaking, pretty sexist of a sort. But if a woman came in, that was their appliances. Okay, you can go well, look at a sewing machine. Eric and I grew up in the, uh, well, the 70s and 80s. Now it's kind of still in that sure. generation where yeah. our moms were basically doing our sewing. At uh, home. I don't yeah. recall my father ever really sewing no. a button. Or, I don't, I mean, your father, he was a firefighter, sure. right? Yeah. Let's bring in Eric Bolio here, who's uh, Rick's partner in crime for how long? Yeah, for how long? Uh, I'm working on year 25 at the store this year. Year 25. Now, are you the like assistant manager? or is that what's Store your manager. Store manager. Yeah. And, uh, wow, you're going into year 25 at Schiller's. Uh, Eric, as I said, you know, we're the same age. You grew up together, going to St. Mary's, St. Joseph School. Uh, tell us about, uh, well, growing up in this community and now, you know, you and I. Well, I mean, bond. like Keith said, you know, growing up at uh, St. Mary's, St. Joseph's, you know, the elementary schools in town. And uh, I think straight through uh, till my parents pulled us out after my older brother graduated. Um, 
and then I went to Kramer and then Wyndham Tech from there. That's right. You and I went to, so you went to Kramer probably the same yep. year I did. Yeah, yeah. same year. So my, yeah. my younger siblings finished, but uh, yeah. yeah, I remember I was I was in the same boat you were, right? And after, then you went to St. Bernard after, though, right? Yeah, I went so after sixth. I left St. Mary St. Joseph's mm-hmm. School, went to Kramer for seventh and eighth, and then yeah, Lyman ninth and tenth, and then St. Bernard tenth oh, okay. and eleventh. So I kind of jumped a little, but you went Kramer around. to Wyndham, right? Kramer to Wyndham Tech, yeah. Wyndham Tech. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you go Kramer to Wyndham Tech, and uh, tell us, uh, get us a little up to speed on what happened after Wyndham Tech. Uh, well, after Wyndham Tech, I mean, I uh, majored in um, manufacturing is what they have now. It was machine tool back then. I uh, went straight to work for a division of Pratt & Whitney. Uh, spent about seven and a half years there with them. And then my unfortunate uh, demise was my general manager at the time embezzled about half a million dollars and they just shut our division right down. Yikes. Um, so it was, here's your work on Tuesday and the next day the federal government's in shutting down our division and everybody was on their way out. Uh, if you had 30 or more years, they were allowing you to transfer somewhere else. And how many years at that point? I had had about seven and a half okay, at that half, point, so it was a little and what underwhelming. Year was that that was, was 98. Okay, 1998. Uh, I was four months into my marriage when this happened, so... It was a little... How many kids at that time? None, thankfully. None at that time, okay. <laughs> so you come home that day, and like... Yeah, I come home, uh, you know, I, I went over to see mom and dad, and dad says, hey, let me talk to uh, Mr. Schiller, Larry, Rick's dad, uh, see if you can come down and uh, see if he wants to put you to work. Next day I went down, and here we are, almost How 25 about that? years so later. Mr. B with the connection, huh? Yeah, yeah. So dad had worked at the firehouse and then part-time at the store uh, fixing vacuums. Eric's mom um, and dad, love them, love yeah, them. So, good uh, people. So, uh, so okay. So your father gets you hooked up with that. So you, you're pr- pretty much out of work. What a day? Is that what you said? A couple of days. Yeah, couple maybe days? a week total. I think. Yeah, by the time so, I went down there. So he introduced you to Rick. Gets into Schiller's. Tell us about how that. Yeah, that started. Uh, I started out mentoring with Dad, uh, fixing the vacuum cleaners, and then uh, there was a sewing tech on the other side who was only working a couple of days a week at that time. And now, honestly, uh, I, I want to hear more about uh, the stuff. I want to. Did, were you going into this type of business where you're like, oh boy, selling in vacuums? Uh, at this point, you got to take anything you know, was, you know, that it, was that's what it was. It was yeah. newly married, you know, with, right. with the apartment and everything else, and making sure that we could survive the wife and I. And uh, I didn't expect it to be this long. Honestly, I figured I'd stay there. Exactly, temporary. And, no offense, you know, to find, or find another manufacturing job. I mean, I'm an aircraft right. machinist by trade. I was so. hoping it was temporary. To, no. <laughs> <laughs> We still say it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so right, yeah, so it was just it was uh, it was a a really nice thing, you know, for his dad to say, yeah, come to work and and we'll find a place for you. And here we are. So you guys must have hit it off, you know, right off the bat. That, that had to be part of it. I mean, yeah. obviously, and yeah. then you, uh, yeah, and then mm-hmm. um, you just you picked it you picked it up immediately. The, the right? vacuums were pretty simple to work on. Um, it's just airflow. You know, same same thing as like a jet engine. You know, Rick Rick wrote the programming for them, and I helped build them. And you know, we did plasma spray coating at Pratt and Whitney. We did ceramic tile coatings for oh, the space okay. shuttle. So you had some kind of yeah. so machining. You know, manufacturing was there. Um, and then his dad all of a sudden says, "Hey, Paul's not here today. Why don't you come over? I'll show you how to work on these sewing machines." And it was just natural. It was working with my hands again. It, I picked it up really quick. I got handy. I, I could. Yeah. I don't. I, don't, I wouldn't have the coordination. <laughs> it, it's amazing. The inside of these machines now. It's all circuitry and wiring and motors. Yep. Wow. So, so you uh, to this day uh, being store manager as well, you still work on sewing machines. Every day. I just finished a machine before we came down here. Now, what kind of explain what kind of projects people bring in? Like to you know, people need things sewed and, and, and fix a vacuum, that kind of thing. Like what, what's a What's brought in there the most, the Schillers, that uh, needs to be done? I mean, we still, we actually looked the other day to say that we we sell, surprisingly by headcount, we do just as many sewing machines as vacuums, or it's almost identical. The budgetary-wise, the sewing side is significantly bigger than the I'm sorry, side. so you're mainly fixing a sewing machine yeah. and vacuum cleaners. You're not doing any actual sewing. No, we do not do, don't do that. I, oh, sell see, the, I, I sell the machines so that they can do them. I don't want, we do, mm-hmm. we actually... You must have had people go, can you sew this for me? And we, <laughs> we, all, we always do, and we absolutely refuse to do it. because. Yeah. Wow. Well, number one, we have customers that, although the vast majority of sewers are still doing it for fun. They're doing it for enjoyment mm-hmm. nowadays. Sewing went from where your mom and dad and whatever else 
it was a requirement. You had a sewing machine because, you know, Big Brother's jeans became your jeans, became Little Brother's jeans, etc., etc. Now, much more it is, you know, as I say, sew for fun, you'll sew for life. We really went from our classes, from all of what we do, from the machines that I carry, it really is emphasizing sewing as a creative outlet. So if you look at the high end of the sewing world, people you know, look at these machines, uh, and they can be you know, tens of thousands of dollars for some of the highest end of, of things. Like, God, you must be in business, and what are they must be for professionals? Like, no, that's absolutely for people that just find it a lot of fun. And they want to do it, and they'll say, "Well, what?" Well, I say, yeah, the sewing's know, a hobby." Correct? Yeah, they it say, be, you know, yeah. "Look, do you know somebody who owns a boat?" Yeah, do they sell the fish? No. And look, the price of the biggest sewing machine I have is the price of a darn depth finder. You know, it's wow. not. Don't take it from that end of things. But in my end, you know, we have about. 70 machines, different machines in the shop. I was about to say, name some of the... Uh, well, where... Okay. You said some of the high... Name some of the machines you got well, sewing in. We're, we're from a sewing machine. We're a very, very large brother dealership. Um, we handle brother, baby lock, um, Elna, which is a division... Uh, manufactured by Janome. We were just... Had the, I guess, honor, if you want to say it. The brother created three strata of dealerships. So they have their regular dealerships, what they call their gold dealerships, and their diamond elite dealerships. Um, when I let, when they, they just started this in April, when that was formed, my rep told me that, oh, I said, how many diamond elites are there? He said, 25 in the entire country. There are three right now on the eastern seaboard. We are one of the three. Wow. Not so bad. we are one of three diamond elite dealers on the East Coast, and that is a whole bunch of things you have to do. I mean, it, it, it's pretty rigorous as to what you have to be for it to qualify for that. And as local as Schiller's is, I think you guys are telling me you uh, you do stuff outside this area as well, right? Well, we obviously we will draw certainly from can yeah you know, within Connecticut, with up into Massachusetts, things of that sort, and then we have a fairly active website. It's there for all sorts of things. It's www.schillersontheweb.com. I love their website, by the way. It's Schillers been, on the web. Yeah. It's been out there for basically as long as you can have websites. But we ship things all over the United States to, for different things. It's you know it just well, nowadays being whether it's social media, whether it's you know actively having e-commerce, whether it's you know we still try to promote people to come into the store. That still, our overall goal is to be able to work with people to figure out what's appropriate. You know, they'll ask us all the time whether it be a vacuum or something, what's the best machine? And it's, the answer is pretty simple. It's the one that fits your budget and your needs. It's, you know, Maserati makes really nice cars, so does Rolla. We're not going to, I'm not going to own one. <laughs> The business is good, not that good. Um, what about Schiller's West in Hawaii? We'll get to that in a second. Yeah, it's a whole different question. The sewing and vacuum experts are with us. Uh, Rick and Eric, uh, Rick Schiller, Eric Bilio from Schiller's, 1088 Main Street, right across from Memorial Park. Don't worry, Rick, I'm not going to hit you with my pen. It's just a habit I have. Instead of, because uh, our producer, J. Matt Rupar, doesn't like when I go like this on the console. So I play with a pen. Uh, <clears throat> TMI. So uh, here we are, episode 20, of course, brought to you by Liberty Bank, Be Community Kind. It's great to have Rick and Eric in here. And a little side note about Eric and I growing up, not only did we go to grade school together, we were on the, I think Eric would agree with me, yeah, probably, he knows where I'm going with this, he's wearing medical pharmacy blue. We were on probably the best Willimantic Little League championship team of all time. I say sure. best because it was the most dramatic win. Absolutely. Billy Gottlieb. Yeah. Uh, June of 84, right? June of 84, yeah. medical pharmacy over Pulaski, one of the... Greatest memories that Eric and I, we have a lot of memories growing up together, right. but uh, right. I still, uh, I think about that, as I'm sure you You did. just posted the picture recently. Yeah. Right? So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, Billy was uh, grew up up the street from us. That's so right. Billy, yeah. Billy and his uh, brother Dustin were just up the street. That's we were right. I forgot time. about it. Now Billy's out in Vegas. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so Eric and I have a lot of childhood memories growing up. Of course, uh, you know, St. Mary St. Joseph School, which I hope they can um, reopen their doors. Yeah. So that's a whole other story. But so uh, we talked about the website, and you guys have been in business since 1951. Eric joined you uh, it's been 25 years. Uh, Will, ah, here's a question I just thought of, too, because I have plenty of other ones that just 
flying in my head here as we do this show. Will Eric, let me put you on the spot, when you retire, Rick Schiller, is this going to be the guy who takes over? Should I sigh and go? Hey, <laughs> more, more, than, more than likely. I, I chuckle because I really don't have any definitive retirement plans. Now, I can say that only in the sense that my wife retired from teaching after 27 years of teaching at Ram Middle School, whatever else. And um, I didn't retire. So she sort of loves it in that way because... Get up in the morning, she actually makes breakfast, makes me a little lunch, I carry my little lunch bag off into there, and she goes, goodbye, and she goes off to do her thing. <laughs> it's like, works perfect for her, there she's you go. <laughs> not anxious to see me uh, home bothering her the entire day. So it's like, okay, it, seriously, I happen to love doing what we do. Uh, it really is, you can't do this. And that's important. As both a private business, you're dealing with customers, you're doing whatever, and not have a passion to do it and do it, you know, correctly, I guess, whatever you want to say. Uh, if you're not a store that people want to come into, you're dead. It doesn't make any difference who, what's, and where's. So, you know, you have to be a business of concern, have people in there that people want to go visit. And our customers really are a tremendous number of friends and whatever else. They're not just, you know, a mark that, you know, you went off and, oh, here's a box, goodbye. So it's why, you know, somebody buys a sewing machine from us, they get free lessons for life on use of the machine. Oh, wow. They get, Pretty you know, cool. three years. Most of the electronic machines come with three years of free cleaning and maintenance because i got to keep him doing something and whatever <laughs> else. But it's all part of, you know, is what am I giving you? Is it going to work? Uh, they're really expensive yeah. paperweights. So as, as we get ready to wind down episode 20 here of Hometown Threads, you guys have been so successful over the years. Have you ever thought about expanding? And I, and I'm, and I know we joked about you're going to Hawaii soon. We talked about uh, Schiller's West. How about even in eastern Connecticut? The answer is that I've been asked, obviously, do I want to put something in Putnam? Do I want to put it in Norwich? Do I want to... I really don't want to. Um, it's a combination of both overextending what you do. Uh, I would rather focus the business, my staff, you know, I think I happen to have a superb staff that's there. And to go and do that in multiple locations really doesn't work the same. The second or the nth location is... It's sort of like in the old, you know, whatever you saw the commercials, uh, it's just like a Xerox. It's like, no, no, you had the original one and then you had the just like. <laughs> and it would sort of become that way and not, you know, maybe I'm being too much of a control, whatever, but not being able to know that those customers are being treated the way I want to see them be treated is beyond that. So, nope, I'm not going to become, you know, Jeff Bezos. I'm not going to have an empire and whatever else. And it's like, nope. Well, oh, just, well. just by having you guys in the studio, and uh, it's, it's, sometimes we, we wish we had more than 25 minutes of this program. I know there's a lot of people watching and listening going, no, thank goodness it's Sequel. only 25 yeah. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> See, right. But, you know, Rick and Eric, it seems like you guys just, and I've known Eric for years, and I can't believe it's the first time I've actually met Rick Schiller face-to-face. -face. But you guys have seemed like, just by the way you get along, you can tell you really, uh, that uh, you must have a lot of, uh, you can tell you just work really well together. And that's uh, a testament of how successful your business is. So you've mentioned the staff a lot. Both of you, I want you to, this is around the time of the show where I like to like you guys to shout out to your staff and mention, you know, well, all the names if you want. All right, well, we got John Knife that's on the back side of things from a technician. You got Jen uh, Silberry, who is... I, she's been with me as an educator the longest. You got her daughter is now back working with us. She had gone away for a little bit and realized the error of her ways and she came back. So she's now back doing that, doing technology, working a lot with social media. You got Ellie Rhodes that's with me also as an educator. And that's uh, really, really it. it. That's, yeah. that's the staff. And so, you know, it's a little more concentrated on the sewing side because that's where people, you know, we, we work with people a little bit more. But Obviously, the fact side, we do it just as well. Wonderful store, wonderful business, and love the website, too. What's the website again? www.shillersontheweb.com. Is there anything else you guys like want to want to push before no, we say goodbye? Thanks here? for having us in. Thank uh, you. I really thank you. Publicity Legend for the store. Yeah, legendary business. And both of you guys, uh, 
you know, uh, Rick Schiller, Eric Bolio. Uh, you walk right into Schiller's and uh, we'll uh, greet you with a smile. And and I, uh, it's, it's it's that store has been in that location since when again? In that location since 1977. All right, Schiller's. For all your sewing and vac needs, did I say that right? Yep, that's fine. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Sure, and thank pleasure. you, J. Matt Rupar behind the board. And big thanks to Liberty Bank, be community kind. That'll do it for episode 20 of Hometown Threads. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. And that concludes another edition of Hometown Threads. Got a story for Keith? Reach out to him on Facebook by searching Keith C. Rice or email him at krice at hallradio.net. Don't forget to tune in next week on 14 WILI and 95.3 FM, as well as the Willimantic Today page on Facebook.